Hi everyone, it's Rio Cloud Sync. In today's session, we're going to have a look at a new capability in Microsoft Entry ID, which in essence allows your user accounts in your organization and your identities to sign into Microsoft Entry ID and other applications uh, with email as an alternative login ID. This is currently in public preview and is subject to change. However, in essence, it allows your user accounts in your organization to use their extended attributes and proxy addresses assigned to their user identity to sign into a given application rather than using their user principal name or alternatively their UPN. And the way we enact this, we need to access Microsoft Enter ID. So we'll navigate to entra.microsoft.com where you'll be presented the Enter ID dashboard. Of course, you'll need to be assigned the applicable permissions and role-based access control from a least privileged pr perspective. And if we're trying to adopt the zero trust methodology or framework, then we'll want to assign ourselves the application administrator role or alternatively global administrator rights would um, suffice as well. So, how we go about um, implementing this or deploying this to our wider user base or to a subset of users, we can do um, either or either. We first need to access the Entra dashboard. Once we've accessed Entra, where we see identity on the left-hand service pane, we want to scroll down to where we see hybrid management and then select the option for Microsoft Entra Connect. This will present a few options, um, ranging from Entra Connect Sync, which was formerly known as Azure AD Connect Sync, um, and Entra Cloud Sync, which is, let's say, a lightweight, dumbed-down version of Entra Connect, or formerly known as Azure AD Connect, right? Only um, supports um, a single forest rather than multiple forests, and um, there's a whole load of other d dependencies um, it, it relies on. Um, but if we were to connect, uh, select Connect Sync, so once you've selected Microsoft Entry Connect, you're presented a couple of options. One being Connect Sync, which was previously known as Azure AD Connect, and the other being Cloud Sync. Connect Sync is predominantly what people use to synchronize not only user accounts and identities, but also devices and organizational units from on-prem Active Directory domain services up to the cloud, or in this, in this case, Microsoft Entry ID, to make use of security capabilities, management capabilities, um, as well as being able to access cloud applications. Flip that, you've got Cloud Sync, which let's say is a dumbed down lightweight version of um, Entry Connect Sync or Azure AD Connect, um, where in which it only supports a single forest and not multiple forests and has a few other caveats and limitations around that. Of course, today's video is not around Connect Sync versus Cloud Sync. However, there's a whole load of collateral on the Microsoft documentation where in which you can see a comparison guide or a comparison table, Connect Sync versus Cloud Sync. But for this demo, if we were to select Connect Sync, this will take you to your kind of health and advisory dashboard where we can see, okay, when was the last sync run? Of course, automatically it runs a sync every 30 to 35 minutes. You can, of course, initiate that on a manual basis through running or connecting to PowerShell ISC, then running a Delta sync on the uh, local domain controller. Um, we've also got visibility into whether or not we're using password hash sync to convert maybe a fixed string value to a random generated value so that we can synchronize an MD hash from on-prem to cloud um, so that it can't be um, visible to the naked eye or for those people who aren't authenticated or authorized to see that, that password. Um, and we've also got options here to, or visibility into whether or not there's federation enabled. All right, where are we authenticating? Are we authenticating through Microsoft Enter ID or through maybe a third party authentication service? Um, whether or not single sign-on is, is enabled, um, which in essence means we can use the same set of username and passwords um, to access a whole load of different given applications in our organization. And same principle for pass-through authentication, where we can deploy just like, well, similar to the way password hash synchronization works in regards to being able to synchronize passwords from on-prem to cloud and being able to reset passwords in cloud and back down, uh, pass-through authentication allows us to deploy multiple agents to multiple domain controllers for high resiliency and uh, disaster recovery and all that lovely stuff. But what I'm really focusing on today is, of course, the email as an alternative logon ID. This is currently disabled, but if I was to select email as an alternative ID, um, we get a bit of a policy tip. This policy, policy tip says this feature allows cloud authenticated users to sign into Microsoft Entry ID with any of their proxy addresses in addition 
to their UPN. And this tick box exercise here we see is what we like to call the home realm discovery policy. And this option here would enable this, this, this capability for the organization as a whole, right? We also have the option to select um, appropriate Microsoft 365 security groups or OUs we want to kind of roll this out to so we don't have to enable the whole organization as a whole, right? With the stage rollout option though, if, you're not, if you don't want to enable it for everyone, there is a limitation to, like I said, security groups. Um, I think you can only have up to 200 user accounts defined as part of the, the, the rollout policy. And of course you need to connect to Microsoft Graph as well to enact the ability to, to um, conduct the um, stage rollout piece, right? Um, but I think what's important to note as well, the alternative login ID does support um, password hash synchronization as well as pass through authentication. And as and when you select the tip box here, it can take up uh, to an hour for, for propagation. Some of the limitations around alternative login ID is um, leak credentials via identity protection. Right, so if you've got identity protection enabled um, and you've rolled that out to your organization, you most likely won't be able to detect whether or not leak credentials uh, or, or there has have been any leak credentials in your organization um, as it's looking for a UPN to match. But of course, if they're using the proxy address, that of course won't suffice. Hybrid, enter joint and BYD or registered devices also um, do not work as well as legacy authentication. So there's just a few caveats around this, uh, but on the whole, if you are just, you know, have just created user accounts to sign into given SaaS applications in the cloud, then fine or be it. Use this option and allow your user accounts to sign in using maybe alternative email addresses and not their UPN. I think the question is, why would we use this at this point? Well, maybe your organizations went through an acquisition, right? Or they've, you know, your 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 organisation has acquired a whole load of different business units. They've got a whole load of, whole load of different primary domain names. You don't want to go through on a one-to-one -one basis, you know, changing all the domain names or recreating accounts or new new accounts. Then of course, you can um, use the proxy address so that they all marry up and everyone can it can be very coherent, right? So there is a Microsoft documentation for this or Microsoft doc where in which it goes through the process of, of course, setting this up. Like I said, if you want to roll this out to the whole organization, it's just a tick box exercise. But if you want to scope this slightly further to maybe particular security groups, then you need to connect to Microsoft Graph. So if I scroll down here, this is kind of kind of the main use case. Um, for, for, from a Microsoft perspective, um, Contoso has rebranded to Fabrican. Of course, they didn't want to go through the whole process of creating new user accounts, so they've added them as proxy addresses, and then, of course, those user accounts have then been able to access the, um, their known applications using the Fabricant domain via the proxy address field. That's totally applicable as well. Um, this feature is available in the Microsoft Entry ID 3 edition and higher, so you don't need uh, Entry ID Plan 1 or Plan 2. Um, the free edition would suffice as well. Okay. If I was to scroll down, um, to where we see um, two seconds enable stage rollout to test the user sign in with an email address like I said you need to install the module for Microsoft Graph connect to the graph with directory read write all permissions um, get the feature rollout policy right um, and if there is no existing stage rollout policy for this feature, you need to create a new stage rollout policy and take note of the policy ID. This is needed for subsequent steps. You then find the directory object ID for the group to be added to the stage rollout policy. So the group you want to enable this capability for. And um, note the value returned for the ID parameter because it'll be used in the next step, like I said. And then add the group using that policy ID you've 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 um, collated right once you've done that that particular set of users in that particular group would be enabled for this capability and they'll be able to use the proxy address right like I said a relatively new feature I just wanted to ramble on about it for a good five to ten minutes and just show you and highlight there is a Microsoft doc for it you can enable it via a tick box exercise however there are a few caveats and limitations along the way any questions please let me know but everything should be uh, if not stipulated and um, uh, in this Microsoft doc. Thank you very much.